Bogdan, I'm going to come to you. You're going to speak more generally about the emergence of populism as a phenomenon in the European landscape, not least driven by this debate. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity because, uh, uh, first of all, it's good that we are speaking about the problems of uh, migration and populism here in Morocco, in a successful country, in a country that was able to accommodate more than 50,000 of uh, migrants from Sahel during the last uh, three years and uh, was able to collaborate fruitfully with Spain and some other countries con concerning protection of European borders. This is the success story, not only of Morocco, but also of Spain. And it can be an example of a good collaboration with partners of the European Union in our, in our neighborhood. That's first. Secondly, the problem of migration is one of the main reasons for expansion of populism in, uh, in Europe. And the government that the uh, uh, minister presents is a good example of this populist government that emerged in Central Europe that was known in the world during the last 25 years as a protector of transition protector of European values, and even projected European and democratic values abroad. Now, in some countries of uh, Central Europe and some countries of Western Europe, we have a uh, re-emergence of uh, two um, very dangerous tendencies, political tendencies. This is populism and nationalism. And there are regions like Catalonia, for example, that uh, those uh, two tendencies uh, go uh, together uh, ahead, reinforcing each, uh, each other. Populism has the same sources. It is, uh, it is the convenience that uh, establishments were not ready to deal with uh, crucial issues in the European Union, migration as one of those issues uh, itself, but they create also major threats for uh, democratic systems and uh, reverses, and they reverse uh, uh, the tendency that was described by Schumpeter and Huntington as the third wave of uh, democratization. Maybe from the perspective of, uh, of uh, American foreign policy, it is not so so important, but American Freedom House in its project Nations in Transit uh, observed that in 2018, it was uh, the second year that uh, there were more consolidated authoritarian systems than consolidated democracies. And it underlines that among 29 countries, 19, 19, had noticed declines in the overall democratic uh, scores. Freedom House experts, of course, emphasized that illiberalism not uh, became the main tendency in 2017, but effects of illiberalism, what Viktor Orban presented as uh, a concept of illiberal democracy, they were, uh, they were visible two years ago and one year ago so, so strongly. Uh, in Central Europe particularly, this uh, populism means that uh, the people can go to the protests. Yes, they can, they can do it. They can establish and conduct independent uh, NGOs. Yes, they can do it, but many of them, or even majority of them, are supported financially by the state. So, that, so they are not independent in traditional uh, approach. They, uh, people can publish critical articles in some of independent media. In Hungary, the sector of independent media is very limited, very limited. In Poland, fortunately, independent media exists still as an important uh, a, a partner for civil society, 
But people know in Hungary, Poland, and uh, some other countries that expressing themselves, they can have government inspections or attacks can, can be attacked in government uh, aligned media, or even they, they can be under discrimination in employment. I do not want to say that those tendencies are similar to those that uh, created the violent authorit authoritarianism in Eastern Europe, because what's going on in Russia and in uh, some other post-Soviet Republic is completely different shape. I want only to say that this, those tendencies visible in Central Europe are visible also in some countries in Western Europe in which populists uh, either win are the one elections or are ready to win elections. We can see the results of the German uh, election to Bundestag, 12.6% for AFD. In Bavaria, 12.4% for, for AFD. We can see ruling two parties in, uh, in Italy. They don't undermine the institutional framework of constitutional democratic regimes, but they can do it because the source of Western European and Central European populism is the same. Thank you very much. Right, you've heard three interesting perspectives across the European landscape.